Back in 2014, I went to a seminar with Dax Moy. Dax is the man, brilliant mind, brilliant coach. And he was teaching something called mind mapping. Now I had already been very interested most of my life in how the mind works and what can we do to use it to our advantage? What can we do with the mind to alter our reality instead of feeling like we're just victims to the circumstances that are going on? So I go learn from Dax and immediately I start studying it more and more and I'm applying it. I'm doing mind map sessions all the time. I still do them all the time. Mind mapping is basically the science of how your brain forms habits. It's not mind mapping like you're trying to do a brain dump or something like that. So there's key principles that we need to know as we're trying to create a transformation. So let's start there. What is a transformation? Transformation is when the change has become permanent. Anybody can affect and create a temporary change. That's not what we're after. We're after a transformation. So you transform into something else, into something that is a higher frequency, a better version of yourself. With that in mind, we always set out with good intentions, New Year's resolutions, different goals we want to work on, and we're shot out like a cannon most of the time. We start out hot and heavy. With mind mapping, we know that approach is not going to work. Why? Because your brain is not going to form a habit around anything that is willpower based. Let me repeat that for you. Your brain is not going to form a habit around anything that is willpower based. Willpower is very finite. Located up here in your prefrontal cortex, the human brain, we're looking at the three brains, which I'll explain in a second, the triune brain. Once that, will, that willpower and that part of your brain is tapped for energy for the day, there's no more willpower. This is why people will break. They had the best intentions in the morning going into the day. All of a sudden, they get home and they're eating cookies and brownies and going way off script. It didn't make a difference with the willpower. They were using a faulty mechanism that is often taught, just push harder and just will your way through it. It's not gonna work. If you look at like a time intensity curve, on a time intensity curve, you have basically intensity and time. So picture a graph, right? Makes the letter L. The more intense you go, the sharper that graph, that curve is gonna be, right? You're gonna come back down. You can't sustain it that long. So you went very intense for a short period of time. What we really wanna do is go small changes over a long period of time. This is with mind map, again, different ways to use the mind. Think small when you're going through your days. Think small when you're trying to achieve your goals. Think big, and then what can you do in the next moment? With your brain, it's nothing more than a pattern recognition machine. Pattern recognition, that means prediction and response. That's why your brain really exists, right? Help you figure out patterns so you can survive better. So the further out into the future that you think, man, I got to do this. How am I going to lose 100 pounds? How am I going to put 100 pounds on my bench press? How am I going to make enough money to support my family over the next year? Whatever those questions are, the further out that you think, the less prediction and response you have over that outcome, the more your anxiety will rise. We call that the anxiety gap. The further out you're thinking from where you are, the more anxious typically the human being is going to feel because they have less prediction and response. So we have to become aware of our thoughts. So with mind mapping, it's all about your inner dialogue. That's environment number one with mind mapping. There's actually six environments, which I'll cover in another video for you. The inner dialogue, okay, the conversation that's going on up here. This is how you create everything. The process of creation is your thoughts, your words, and then your actions. Your thoughts are mental images that you have in your head. The pictures, your brain works by seeing images. That's the first clue. If you're not getting what you want, you're not feeling the way you want, change the, the mental image that is in your head. What are you actually picturing? Take the time to step back and ask yourself, what am I seeing? What am I focused on right now? Your brain can't ignore a question. So that's another great thing, right? The brain can't ignore a question. What are you focused on? And then you shift and that's gonna lead to your words. Your words create the dialogue that you have in your head. Again, oh man, this sucks, this is really hard. Stop it in its tracks when you catch it. Don't try to fight the other thoughts, just replace them. Don't try to fight the other image, you replace it. Now let me talk to you about the three brains, the triune brain. Paul McLean, doctor I think in the 60s, came up with this theory, and it's a theory, but I like the working model of it because it helps people to understand how the brain works a little bit better, even though it's not exactly the way it goes. So you got the reptile brain, which is the oldest part of the brain, the brain stem high alert, right? There's no thought that goes into that. It's pure survival. And on top of that, you have the mammal brain, the mammalian brain. So with the mammal brain, that's emotion, that's connection. That's really that part of your brain, relationships. And then the human part of your brain is creativity, linear logical thought, self-actualization, goal achievement. That's that part of your brain. And these things all work in concert with each other. Let's take a real world, world scenario. 
We had a client here at Newell Strength this morning, and he was saying he's going to be trying some Ozempic coming up. He's tried everything, can't really control the eating because of stress, and he's not sleeping well. So then we know in that scenario, is it that he doesn't know what to eat, or is it the stress? So he's having stress, right? So that's hitting the mammal brain somehow. He's really, there's something going on in the mammal brain or the animal brains that's gonna keep pulling him off course to the destination he wants to achieve. So if those animal brains aren't happy, they're gonna keep taking attention away from that frontal part of your brain, the human part of your brain, that wants you to create, that wants you to achieve. So we have to keep that in mind. In mind map, we say the thing is not the thing. It's not that you're 100 pounds overweight because you don't know what to eat. What else is going on? Is there a relationship thing? Is there something at work? Is there uh, uh, associations with food from your childhood? It doesn't really matter. The thing with mind map, we start to try to figure out, okay, where are you in threat? What is the, the biggest stressor in your life? That's what I would ask you. Okay, let's say it's, I'm feeling anxious because I might lose my job. So I would say, what, what is the, the level of anxiety you're feeling on a scale of one to 10? I'm feeling a 10, okay. 10 is the most you could feel. Let's focus on a strategy to get that down to nine. Again, think small. How do we get it down to nine? We throw out ideas, start doing a daily walk, start doing some breathing exercises. We go through these things. Take one thing, we implement it, see if it knocks it down a level. That subjective feeling, which is key. Next time, let's try to get it down one more. Over time, this stuff just happens. Rather than using willpower, you just have to know, locate the threats, how do we work around them, because then forming the habits is relatively easy. With habit formation, here's another thing. Most people think a habit takes 21 days to form. It does not, it takes 66 on average. 21 is the very low end. So you gotta stay with stuff for a period of time. You gotta constantly redirect your attention. The biggest thing with mind mapping is you need to become more self-aware. You need to start becoming aware of the conversation that you're having. Think about your thoughts. We call that meta thinking. Take time to actually sit there and think about and evaluate the thoughts that you're having. Very few people ever do this. Therefore, the brain will just keep running on its own script. And the way your brain thinks, your thought patterns, those are habits as well. Habitual way of thinking. So you've got to catch them, change them. It's going to be difficult at first. You've got to put in the work. You've got to be mindful. So bring yourself to self-awareness. That way you can start changing the dialogue. And then once you can really start focusing on the self-awareness, that's where you can really try to be present in the moment. The present moment is the ultimate objective of life, to be fully in the moment. There's nothing else than this moment right now when I'm making this or when you're watching it. This is the only thing that exists, right? And you can put everything into it when you feel that. When you're here, but you're not here because you're thinking about X, Y, and Z, it's a weak vibration. You're not fully experiencing that situation. So that's why I like to try to aim for, for myself, and clients to get them to that realm where they're more present more often than not. And how do we keep improving that? I don't think you can fully ever do that. Maybe you could, obviously Jesus did it. Uh, esteemed figures such as Gandhi maybe that did it, Buddha. But that's the scope, what we're trying to get to. You have everything you need and the life that you have created up to this point is a direct reflection of the thoughts that you've had. The thoughts have driven the words and then the actions. So take peace in that. Last thing I'll tell you guys for this mind map introductory lesson, when you're working out, use that as a way to start mastering the inner dialogue. Put yourself through some tough sets that are gonna challenge you. You don't wanna be outside the comfort zone. You're not gonna act efficiently there. You're not gonna engage in the moment. You're gonna be in a stress response. Act at the edge of your comfort zone. Get to where, okay, yeah, that weight's gonna be tough, but I could do it, rather than taking the easy way out. So you start using that. That's the main reason for me for training nowadays is see what my mind does, make my mind feel good. But then when I put myself in a real tough situation, what do you do? Do you stop or do you just keep going? The goal is to keep going.